Well, talking about three weeks' time, Jonas Vingo winning this, as we've said so many times, quite dominantly. And uh, is he now the favourite for the Tour de France, considering the route the team Jumbo Visma are bringing as well, provisionally, and of course his fellow rivals? It's always hard to say, isn't it, with with Pogaccia just kind of doing his uh, incognito mode prep for the Tour de France. It's just very hard to, to tell, apart from Instagram posts and stuff like that, where he's gone up the highest paved road in, in Europe, and I'm like, cool. I, I don't know what to take from this, but cool. Yeah, Jonas, he, he won by such a dominant margin that that does provide a certain element of confidence that Jonas is going to repeat his Tour de France victory, especially when you consider, like Ewan was saying earlier, perhaps his mountain support here wasn't that great. There was a, there was some help for Laporte and stuff, but there was no Kuss, there was no Klausweg, there was no Kelderman and stuff like that. But So he managed to, I don't want to say make the most of a bad scenario because it it wasn't necessarily bad. It was just that there's room for better climbing kind of domestiques to come into the fray and improve his chances. But I think that he is, at the moment, if, I haven't looked at the bookies, but I would presume that he is going to be going into this as as the favourite, considering that Pagacha's build up, no matter if he wins the Slovenian time trial champs and the road race, I think that the fact that Jonas has won the prestigious like warm up race ahead of all these GC favourites is going to be a deciding factor that he is more of a favourite because Pogaccio won't be facing comparatively better opposition in his prep. I agree. I'm, I strongly agree. I feel like, yeah, Pogaccio is definitely, now that he's not racing, we don't know where to gauge him. So Jonas has more of the momentum in, in his in his favour. I think he, he seems actually pretty okay with it and all this pressure on his, on his shoulders and that momentum is definitely switching. If we look back in our discourse after sort of Ronde van Vlaanderen thinking, and Paris Nice as well, thinking Pogacar's number one man. It feels like that's now changed completely. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was very, very dominant, to be honest, from Vingo. And I, I, I kind of concur that this is the strongest I've ever seen him. And one personal weakness I've had with, with Jonas Vingo is that he um, he's not quite so good in the rolling kind of classic looking stages. Those ones that Pogacar's really good at. But he sort of, he lit up a hilly rolling stage that I didn't earmark for GC at all. And he really rolled with the punches there, kind of accidentally attacked off the front, really. And then even at La Bastille in Grenoble, he was the strongest there on that really, really steep kicker at the end. In terms of the GC guys, it's seeming like there's no real terrain that's going to be an issue. Pogac is going to get these bonus seconds through sprints and so forth. Yes, but I think hanging on in these like difficult terrains that usually would favor Pogacar over Vingo, I think the sort of there's more equality now or at least there's more evidence of equality between them after this Dauphiné performance well I don't know what Pro Cycling Stats are doing they haven't got their history tab so I opened up a history tab on first cycling the one that Ewan has been talking about and uh, yeah an alarming statistic for any Danish fans we've had no Danish Tour de France winner that has won the Dauphiné and then gone on to win the Tour obviously it's only Bjarne Reese and Jonas Fingal but uh, Jakob Fulshang has won the Dauphiné twice and he never won the Tour de France. Bit of history to correct there. I, for one, I want Tadabiacha to be on his best form. I don't want to just see Jonas Bingo right off and win the whole thing because last year, like both were saying, was such an incredible addition. If you're neutral if you're a Pogacar fan or you're a Bingo fan, I think that battle was definitely one for the ages. So is there anyone else you think that could, if, let's say, Tadabiacha is not there is there anyone else who can kind of come out of the shadow and rival Jonas Vingo? Adam Yates, that's it, to be honest. Um, all these guys that we were sort of earmarking for that interesting battle for third your Carapazes, your Enric Mass, these kind of guys they were all a bit underwhelming at Dauphiné. Yates was good, and I think that's a little bit worrying in the in a sense that Yates, who will probably be Pogacar's best helper, was really good form here so that's probably one thing UAE will take out of it as a positive they also rode really well I think as a squad with a lot of their Tour de France guys Micah rode a good race I thought um as a sort of domestique which will be next month for Pogaccio once more but to be honest Yates is the only man I see could possibly contend Jonas maybe Hindley if he gets really into the swing of things because I was I was really impressed with his Dauphiné here he's a guy who's done really well in Grand Tours formats maybe he could also be up there as well but I'm I'm finding it really hard to to imagine a winner who isn't called Tade or Jonas. Yeah, I I agree with that. 
but it's just argue, you could argue the angle that because we're not seeing much of Pogatra, it actually creates more intrigue and more excitement going into the tour. Because if we'd seen, if we see him racing and stuff and we're like oh you know he's only racing the slovenian kind of national races we don't know what to gauge from this actually that's exciting in its own sense because that will always leave an element of oh but we, we don't know how he actually is and it always creates this element of mystique around how pagatra is actually going to be going inside into the tour obviously Jonas is this big kind of sphere right now where he is taking up all the favoritism here but i think that pagatra is always going to be there in terms of another name yeah like a Hindley could maybe do something but the only thing that's going to stop Pionis is, is either a Tade or some badly timed incident that's going to kind of affect Jonas in, in the tour that's just unlucky and that seems to just be the way that cycling is at the moment at the Tour de France okay what about his team uh we've talked about his team a lot obviously Kelderman's added to that Van Baal he was here in the Dauphiné looked very strong Sepp Kuss Obviously, we know he's come from the Giro. Nathan Van Hoendoing, Christopher Laporte, who's at the Dauphiné as well. Thies Benoit and Wat Van Aert, who's at the Tour de Suisse. To be honest with you, we were we were talking about this last week. Was the uh, Kelderman versus Dylan Van Baal thing? And I don't know. For some some literally because it's just racing this week. It sort of turned on its head a little bit. Van Baal did look quite good in that Dauphiné stage today in stage eight, whereas Kelderman's hemorrhage time in the TT today at the Tour de Suisse on a stage where, you know, he should be up there gaining time. He he has done very good time trials in the past. He finished on the same time as Julian Bernard. Like he lost time to guys like I'm not saying Julian Bernard is a bad patch, but I'm saying that Kelderman needs to be doing better. Julian Bernard's father won a time trial at Mont Ventoux. That doesn't mean he himself is is this is notable, but it's 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 nepotism. It's in there, but yeah, <laughs> this isn't Mont Ventoux. This is Switzerland around a lake. Yeah, I agree. I feel like our discussion last week about Jumbo Visma is dated like a bag of piss. It is. It has not stood the test of time. Van Bala looked okay, like good at points. Um, so he's probably sort of hardening his position in, in that Tour de France squad. But yeah, I mean we'll wait and see what Kelderman does. But at the moment, given that Kreiswijk has abandoned, that that's the update we need to give. Kreiswijk crashed out of Dauphiné and he's not going to be at the Tour de France. That means that Kelderman's in the squad. Who's the next reserve? We don't know. Rumor has it might be Roglic. I personally think Valter would should be there, but what do I know? Do you think but, this team is stronger than last year? That's probably a good question. I think the other teams are stronger than Yumbo is. I think I think UAE is really, really strong this year. Like remarkably stronger than it was last year with so many of their recruitments. Also the fact that half half of UAE pulled out quite early on with COVID and injuries. This year I think UAE is gonna look really good. You see that like Adam Yates is why well, he was up there in the mountains, second place overall here, beating the people that Pogacha and Jonas will be racing against. Uh, Miguel Biel won a time trial against Jonas Vingegaard. You cross over and you see like Mike has been looking pretty good this year. You see that like his teammates are riding well this season and they're ready and they're really, really committed to, 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 to Tate. I think the other squad this year is almost equally as strong as it is last year. Maybe without Roglic that changes a little bit, but I think I think they'll probably ride in a similar fashion in terms of their manpower. It's quite similar. I just think that like UAE will be different and maybe the other rivals as well will bring stronger teams that won't be depleted through COVID and all these outbreaks this year. Yeah, there's no cobbles. Yes, that, that that's a good point. But like you're saying, the lack of Roglic, you know, a lot of people have pointed out in the comments section about how without Roglic last year of the tour, and it is definitely a very valid point. But without Roglic of the tour last year, beating Tade might not have been possible. You could also argue that Jonas did well. Wow, and Art technically dropped Pagacha on up Otakam. So in theory, would. Jonas have won anyway. I don't know, but sure, but that Glan on stage was a definite big like gash in Pagacha's ability to win that tour. Without Roglic here, it's definitely going to be a more mano a mano thing. Because no offense to a Kelderman or a Koos or anybody like that, but they're not going to serve the same role or provide the same threat that a Roglic has, who has been a competitor to Tade for for years now. So I would argue, like you and was saying, that I don't think. This year's Jumbo Visma squad is as strong as last year's squad. I am 
certainly more excited to see what UAE are going to bring in terms of being the more aggressors, I suppose. And I think they're going to come out swinging, especially with opening two stages, which suit Tade arguably a bit more in terms of uh, a bit more punchy and stuff. And we've definitely seen that Pigach is a bit better over that kind of stuff than uh, than Jonas is. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what UAE are going to do. You know, they were look good last year, like McNulty and, and Bjerg has certainly seemed to have stepped up this year as well. So I think that Jumbo are going to need to keep Jonas wrapped in cotton wool because they don't have that secondary leader to provide that like fallback option or the ability to one-two. It's going to be all on Jonas. 